Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about correlation. So correlation looking at the relationship between two variables. And we denote that using R, which can be confused with R squared, which is a different method that I will surely go over in a different video. But right now I'm only talking about correlation denoted with R, not R squared. Okay, so the value of correlation can take on values from negative 1 to positive 1, with negative 1 being a perfect inverse relationship as one variable increases, the other decreases perfectly. Uh, positive 1 is the same except they both increase together. So if one variable increases, the other one increases. Zero denotes no relationship at all. So if there's no correlation, the points are scattered randomly on a plot. Or seemingly randomly on a plot. But there's some relationship in it that these tests can't assess. Okay, so like I said, the positive correlation. Both variables increase, negative, one increase and the other decreases, zero, there's no relationship in it that the correlation can capture. Okay, so why am I making the point about whether or not the correlation can capture it? So it depends heavily on the type of correlation method you use. If you took an introductory stat class, you probably did a Pearson correlation. And if you do a correlation in R, your default method is Pearson. So, Pearson correlation only looks at linear relationship between two variables. So, you, you, can, you need to be able to draw a straight line for that relationship to be caught. If it bends, if it's saying quadratic, you're not going to capture it. It's going to report a correlation lower than you would actually get using a, a different test. So the Spearman rank correlation allows a little bit more flexibility in the relationship you're looking at. It is what we call non-parametric. It, it can look at more complex relationships as long as they're monotonic, meaning that there's no weird sum, like you have two different groups in it, in, in, the data, the data would be better fit with two lines, per se. And Kindle Tower is it's another non-parametric method used when you have a lot of repeating data. Okay. So, the one you're going to most often see is the Pearson correlation coefficient. And this is the formula. So you have the sum of x minus the mean of x times y minus the mean of y. And these x and y are, they should have a little subscript i. It's for every pair of x and y. So when you start this, you do it for the first pair, x1, y1. When you do it for the second pair, and so on until you're done doing it. And then you do the same thing in the denominator it, these x's and y's are for every pair of x and y. Where, of course, the mean, you calculate that one time. So this gives a measure of how associated the values are. And, of course, it's a Pearson correlation coefficient, so that's linearly. I don't know the formula for the other ones offhand, but I imagine... The Spearman rank correlation and Kendall's tau are probably less intuitive. That's because they have to capture nonlinear relationships and use rank order. We don't generally like to do non parametric statistics by hand. And honestly, you'd never do it. You'd never do this on a real data set. You'd always use some kind of statistical package. 
I recommend the art, but of course there's like film, um, the movie, the dog sorts of options, yeah, FBS, there. Okay. So just to briefly go over the correlation coefficient again. So I already said one is the perfect positive relation. So negative one is perfect negative. Zero is no no correlation. If we're talking about Pearson uh, correlation, we're saying no linear relationship exists. We're saying nothing about any other type of relationship. If we're talking Spearman, it gets a little bit more freedom in saying that there's no relationship, but you have to really look at your data, not to get a, a good picture of it. Maybe there's a relationship when you look at multivariate analyses. Okay, so as a general rule, and many people use different rules, they, it really depends on the field you're in, the, the belief that you've affected, or way too many things, like the actual cutoff you use, but you can consider point 0.1 to point 0.3 being weak, and that's absolute value. So we're not talking about the direction. It, this could also be negative point 0.2, and we'd still be talking about the same thing. Point 0.3 to point 0.5 being moderate, and over point 0.5 being strong. Okay, so on my website, I give an example. And, uh, so this is a normality assumption in day two. No, no significant outliers. Squared terms really dislike outliers, and we have squared terms. Um, so, I'm legally obligated to say that correlation does not imply causation. Two things can drag together on a plot and not necessarily be related. If you wanted to, you could Google funny spurious correlation. You'd find all sorts of examples. Causation comes from experimental design, not a statistical test. Okay, so in the most common Pearson correlation, you're only looking at linear relationship. If your relationship is polynomial or lin uh, log linear or something like that, it'll give you a low correlation, even though you may have a pretty good association between your two variables. Okay, don't forget, maybe you can use a scatter plot. No matter what you're doing, you should, you should make a scatter plot and look at your data. Okay, so. Yeah, that's correlation. Most common one, Pearson, Spearman, and Kendall Tower are also options. You normally use Spearman and Kendall Tower when you have a nonlinear relationship, but they're all fine options. Okay, that's in the video. Thank you for watching.